Hello guys and welcome back to another Thorncraft 4.2 tutorial. So today we're going to be covering runic shielding. I've been trying to put this off for as long as I can, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it out of the way. I'm going to get it over and done with. Um, there's nothing I have against runic shielding other than the fact it's so grindy to get into. It's horrible. Um, once you, It's like really, really good, but just trying to get into it. And it takes up bauble slots as well. Which I'm not a fan of because there's so much better stuff that you fill your bauble slots with. Uh, but yeah, when you get into the armor side of it, it just takes so much time and effort. And it just drags the day out. It's utterly ridiculous, I tell you. Uh, but if you want to get into runic shielding, then this is the tutorial of how you get into it. So there's three base items you can make. And this is just items. This isn't including what you can put on the armor. Uh, but three base items you can make with runic shielding on them. They're each going to require their mundane counterpart. So first of all, you've got the mundane ring uh, for the runic ring of shielding. Ring of runic shielding. And then you're going to need your mundane amulet for a amulet of runic shielding. And then lastly, you're going to need your mundane belt for a girdle of runic shielding. So these are a little bit expensive. They're not too terrible. Uh, they're going to take a primal charm each. Scribing tools each, amber each, and one fabric, enchanted fabric each. Then the ring is going to take one night or the amulet will take two night or, and then the girdle slash belt will take three night or as well. And the uh, required essentia gets a little bit more expensive per part. Uh, they're very, very good um, items. We'll have a little read of the book here. I'll just give you a little sort of description of them. Um, these devices create a barrier of magical energy that wards out most types of damage. The shielding has a pool of hit points from where damage is subtracted, first protecting the wearer from all harm. Once this pool is depleted, the wearer starts taking damage as normal. Ret the pool replenishes over time and requires terror and air vis to replenish its charge, which draws from carried wands. Uh, the armor offers no protection from damage suffered due to drowning, starvation, or similar environmental hazards. Due to this nature, the armor cannot be enchanted by normal means, but you're sure there's ways to improve its effectiveness. You just need to discover them. Okay, so basically what this does is it's going to give you another set of hit points. Um, the more runic shielding you have, the more hit points you have. And then if you take any damage from like mobs or other players, it's going to deplete that pool first. Once that pool is depleted, it will then start taking out your actual heart. Uh, and like it said, your pool will repl replenish over time using this from your wand, air, and terror uh, primarily. So you got to be careful of that. It will um, just replenish your thing. So just be careful. Just be careful. It will, it will replenish and you have to recharge it. That's all that works. So it's really, really cool that it gives you like extra. It's basically like a defensive magical layer. It's like a warded layer over you. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, but there are some upgrades you can do to these. So the very first one we're going to have a look at is the revitalizing ring of shielding. Um, so you're runic shielding plus five on that. You're going to lose a runic shielding point doing this. I think you lose a runic shielding point through all of them. Might be a couple more. Uh, but this ring is a specialized version of the runic ring ring of shielding uh, slightly less charged than the ring it is based on but when your runic shielding is breached it will release a pulse of regenerative re -ener, regenerative energy that allows for a few seconds this effect cannot trigger more than once every 20 seconds so what this is going to do although it's going to drop your runic shielding down a little bit um, it's up to you as if it's worth it it's not that expensive to make it's going to take a regen potion um, two minutes one just a level one uh, potion of regen uh, but what it's going to do is going to drop your runic shield and point but at the same time when the shield basically disappears it's going to give you that regen effect maybe it won't last for two minutes it'll last for a few seconds and then it'll disappear again and then if your shield charges up Again, within 20 seconds and get its breach, it's not going to regen for another 20 seconds. Uh, so you won't get it like every time your shield is breached. It'll only happen every 20 seconds. So it can be kind of worth it to do that one. It's up to you if you think it is or not. So we're going to lose another runic shielding on this point. This one's going to take a speed 2 uh, potion. 
Uh, charge Ring of Shielding. This is a specialized version of the Ring of Shielding. It has slightly less charge than the Ring it's based on, but increases the recharge time of the Ring of Shielding by 25%. You can wear more than one of these rings, effectively having the normal recharge time. So it's not just going to uh, reduce by 25% the recharge time on your ring, but it will also cross over to anything else with runic shielding on it as well that's the most important part of it that's probably the most useful one out of the two rings that you can upgrade to uh, because it's just basically going to make it a lot faster you don't really need to regen too much i mean you got the runic shielding there and i don't know more times that more times than not it's not going to get breached um so it's up to you which one you want to go for like i said but personally i would go for the charge one Right, so the next one is the Amulet of Emergency Shielding. Uh, again, we're going to lose a Runic Shielding point on this, but this uh, has slightly less charge the Amulet is based on. But when your Shielding is breached, this upgrade will instantly add 8 charge to your Shielding amount. The effect cannot trigger more than once a minute. So once your thing is breached, it is going to give you 8 more, um, which kind of works out a lot better. It's, go it's not going to be triggered more than once a minute, but... Say you would breach your runic shielding, it would then put another eight levels on top of that. Just emergency sort of backup, like power is there. Um, and then obviously once that goes, it's not going to trigger again for a minute. So you're going to have to regen your shield all the way back up uh, before you can even get this again. And you got to wait a whole minute um, since the, after this one pulsing out. So it is kind of worth it, but it's up to you again if you want to risk losing that permanent point. Um, obviously, you only get the eight bonus points if it's ever breached, so it's up to you. You know, I'd say go for it because why not? You're only losing one point, and you're going to gain eight if it is breached. So it's sort of like a little safety net thing there, which is quite nice. So the very last one we're going to look at is the kinetic girdle of shielding. This is a specialized version of the thing, less charge, blah blah blah. But when your shielding is breached, a detonation of kinetic energy will be released, damaging and shoving anything back, anything nearby. Uh, so, and this cannot trigger more than once every 20 seconds. So this is another really cool one. Basically, it's going to damage things and it's going to push them away. So if you're getting swarmed by mobs or anything and it's just going to go, literally, as soon as your shielding goes, it's just going to go, bang, explode out everywhere. Everything is going to go flying back with a little bit of a knockback effect. And it'll allow you to maybe make a getaway or something like that or just run to safety away from everything. Which is really, really cool. I'd say just go straight up and upgrade it. Um, they're not too bad to upgrade these. I mean, they take a couple of shards, quite a bit of Essentia. And the instability is high on a lot of them. Uh, but if you've got quite a stable altar, get yourself some nice bits of stability around here. And you should be alright. Cool. Um, so the very last thing I want to show is the rune Runic Shielding Augmentation. Uh, so what this does, rings, amulets, and girdles with runic shielding is all good and well, but surely you can apply this protective enchantment to other things. Of course you can. By utilizing the magic of thaumaturgy, patent pending, uh, you are able to add runic shielding to most magically stable pieces of armor. Magically stable items are those crafted from thaumium, enchanted fabric, or similar magical items. Uh, magical material, sorry. Uh, only a single charge of runic shielding is added to the item, but you can enchant an item multiple times. This is expensive, and the amount of ingredients and essentia required will increase with each level. The salismundas required will equal the level of the shielding you want, and the essentia will, uh, the essentia cost will increase exponent exponentially. Um, you can enchant existing runic items like rings of shielding as well however the cost is calculated based on their existing runic charge making an exceptionally expensive process so you can do this on several different things this is just kind of giving you an idea here uh, but it's going to take a diamond for every single level that you want and it's going to take whatever you have in the middle and then say you've got to go up through the levels as well so if you want runic shielding one uh, you then need to put runic shield in two in the middle as you can see that's going up level by level by level So once you want uh, level two, you need to put a level one runic shielding in there This is where it gets really expensive and really tedious especially when you need 512 potentia for a level five runic shielding enchantment um, <laughs> This is the bit that I hate because I tried runic shielding on survival and it's just so difficult to get 
especially just doing one piece is really really expensive let alone trying to do four pieces um, but that's that's just my personal preference if you guys think runic shielding is cool enough to grind all that time into then you go for it uh, let me know what you think because it is pretty nifty i just don't have the time to grind into it uh, but that is all we've got time for today so we've covered runic shielding i've got that done and out the way i was dreading it a little bit but it's done it's finished it's out the way but thank you guys as always for watching i hope you have yourselves a very fantastic day make sure you smash that thumbs up button if you liked the video uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll see all your beautiful faces in the next uh, video goodbye